Numbers 28 and 29, People versus James Johnson, 251FH, 2203FH. Jessica Bland, here on behalf of People. Sandra White on behalf of James Johnson and 2203FH. And Sam Bernstein for Mr. Johnson on the probation violation matter. All right. So similarly situated, I think, to the other case, we have a current case that is in pretrial status. That's the 2203 FH case. And then there are probation violation allegations. There are six of them. Um, and then there are added counts on four of the six. So let me just get on the record, Mr. Bernstein. Have you had a chance to go over the added counts with your client? I have not. I think I got those today, but Mr. Johnson's aware of the situation, so it, it wouldn't be a surprise to him. Mr. Johnson, basically, they're saying that the new case involving Caitlin Kirby is a probation violation, so they added that to the probation violation. So, okay. It's, it's not a surprise to us, Your Honor. We're, I think we're okay there. So you would waive reading of those added counts, and then we would proceed with your client probably standing mute to those charges? Yes, Your Honor. I'm comfortable with that. All right. Mr. Johnson, are you comfortable with that? You can talk about it with Mr. Bernstein afterwards. Uh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm aware. At this of... time, you're plead not guilty or you're not going to say anything about the allegations. They're just added. So Mr. Bernstein has waived your uh, the formal reading of those that we would do normally. And so we're okay. just going to proceed. My guess is a similar situation that we would be looking, if there is a resolution in this case, it would involve a resolution of both the new matter as well as the violation matters. Is that accurate? Yes, sure. Uh, yes, yeah. Oh. So what do, is there anything we can do today or do you need additional time? We're gonna need additional time. I believe the new case is scheduled before your honor. Is it November 16th, Ms. Blanche, do you know? The new case involving Ms. Kirby uh, was bound over, is charged. It's November 16th on your docket, Judge. And then there are three counts of RNO, which he has a PCC on, on um, October 20th. So we also would need to wait on that if we want a global resolution on everything. Now, those, okay. were, those three counts, uh, those were the counts that was dismissed, right? And then they yes. just- Correct. Yes, they were dismissed. They were rewritten. So you were rained on them and they were set for PCC on 1020. And I think you have an exam date already on 1026, I want to believe. So okay. if we were to proceed to the 16th of November, I think was the date you said, that would then have everything kind of, at least we would know the posture of all that stuff. Yes, and he already has another case set that day. So that probably would be safe, Judge. Yeah, yeah. I think they're making a, uh, they're putting in a motion for that day as well. Okay. Uh, my other so term. we'll adjourn the pretrial as well as the vo violation of probation hearing to November 16th at 1.30 p.m. Um, I will say that these have been adjourned a few times, so we're not going to keep doing that. I'm not saying... I'm going to give you an immediate trial date, but likely if there's not a resolution on the 16th or something that drastically changes the case, I'd probably look to give you a trial date sometime in March, April to keep the matter going. So just so you're aware of that, okay? okay thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mr. Johnson, so, will to address bond? Right. Go ahead. Although I've read the letter, I've read oh, the letters, read the letter? um, you know, but yes. Oh man, I was thinking I, I I continue to write you. I know it's like a couple of them, but I I continue to write you because every time I was asking you about it, it seemed like they wasn't getting out. So I, I wrote you a one. Well, I don't respond to them. I just read them. <laughs> don't hold your breath for the response. So okay. go ahead. We'll let Ms. White want to go ahead and make an argument here. I mean, this is a tough one to make, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, Mr. Johnson's bond was revoked due to an armed robbery charge, and this charge has since been dismissed. When he did have a PR bond with your honor, he was allowed to leave for a funeral, and he did turn himself back in as he was instructed. He is not running from his charges. He has an address in Ypsilanti that he's able to provide to the court. He is a single father, and at this time, his daughter, his daughter does not have stable housing. These cases will most likely continue to be adjourned as we work through the charges, and he has been in custody since about July. We are asking for a PR bond. Uh, Mr. Johnson does have a bond in another matter with the GPS tether. 
So if, but if your honor would agree to a tether if ordered in this matter, that will be fine. Or if your honor is inclined to do a cash bond, we're asking for about 5,010%. Okay. Ms. Glenn, well, let's let the prosecutor respond. And then you can, if you want to, you can. Okay, thank you, your honor. So judge, the problem is, is that he has a violation of probation through you. He has new um, cases, three counts of um, possessing and distributing um, heroin. Then he has the three, in our, uh, three resisting and obstructing officers coming up into your court. He has a threatening a government official that's coming to your court. His recommendation on the VOP is, I, I think it was 12 months to begin with, but now that there's a new case where he threatened the prosecutor, his uh, recommendation, I think, is going to jump to 16 months or 18 months. So he's going to, I mean, if something happens, the global re resolution here was that he would serve, um, I would run sentences concurrent with his VOP. So he's not going to get out if that is the resolution we're, we come to. And he's going to just accrue time on um, the cases. Um, the promise is that he's violated now more times um, since he was first before your honor. So I'd ask you to keep him remanded based on all of that. Can I speak now? Mr. Johnson, we did talk thoroughly yesterday about your bond, and I believe I've covered everything. I just want you to be careful about what you say, okay? Yes, ma'am. So if you want to speak, you will. I'll let you. But Mr. Bernstein, is there anything you want to add before I turn it over to Mr. Johnson? No, Your Honor, I think Ms. White articulated it very well. And I think the same arguments apply to my cases, my probation violation. All right. And so I also want to, I've, I've given Ms. Blanche an opportunity, but some of these are for violation of probation. So Agent Moore, I assume you were requesting he be remanded? I am requesting that he be remanded and I concur with Ms. Blanche. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Johnson, but be careful. Don't talk about your pretrial matters because that's something that's not resolved yet. Okay. Um, like Ms. White, I just wanted to, you know, discuss the things that she was saying as well. Um, um, you do to a bonds was I was out on pro, pro uh, PR bonds for these matters, uh, all these matters, and we kept adjourning it, waiting on these matters to appear in front of you or take its toll on whatever was going to happen. Um, uh, in April, back in April. Uh, my child mother was killed in Inkster. You, uh, we remember the, uh, the I situation, do. whatever, and you let me out. And it, it was during that time we had a, a false allegations, which has now since been dismissed due to the young lady on the phone stating that she's sorry for putting the false allegations on me. And um, I still have contact with this young lady. It's my girlfriend's sister, honestly. And uh, she was just in a jealous rage and put this fake armed robbery on me, which caused on, on August 1st, you revoked in my bonds, stating that you wanted to see what happened with those charges. Since then, those charges, it was dismissed on August 8th, I believe. Um, the charges was dismissed. I'm like, like, like Ms. White said, with those, that, that, that charge was very serious, you know, carries a lot of, I think the penalty was life or something like that on the, on, on the armed robbery. You let me out, I attended the funeral and still turned myself back in, knowing that I had that, 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 that matter, even though it was false allegations, knowing that I had that matter still, you know, within the court. I turned myself in, you released me once again. Like, I'm not running from any charges. I'm not, I'm, uh, my four-year-old daughter hasn't even started school yet because, she can't, um, you know, her mother's deceased and I'm the only other parent that can put her forth in school. So like I, you know, I mean, even if we come back on November 2nd, you guys take the bonds away. I mean, I just want to at least get out and put my, my daughter into school, get her over there with my sister, a stable address where she can start school and proceed the school year. You know, my sons, I, I mean, it's jail time caused a lot of trauma for everyone. You know, I don't have no victims. They saying that I threatened the government official, but I never threatened the government official. But it's, it's like you said, you don't want me to speak on those matters. I mean, I, I don't. Have, but I'll tell you, though, that's, you know, we've talked about this, though. Remember the, the whole lecture about people are doing their job and, you know, and, the, yes. and, and so to some extent, you know, that's the part of this, Mr. Johnson, that I wrestle with. Um, yes. 
because you know you're right the armed robbery charge was dismissed and that was that's what ultimately i i revoked your bond on but then there are these other alleged violations and i can't turn a blind eye to those and that's yeah, kind of yeah. i think i'm repeating my i think i said that before and so the fact of the matter is you know, I don't know what we're going to do on November 16th, Mr. Johnson. I don't know if it's going to be a global resolution to all this. I don't know if it's going to be a plea. I don't know if it's going to be setting it for trial. But it's not that Ms. White or Ms. Bernstein can't make another request at that time. But I can't let you out right now. I mean, I'm not I'm not unaware of what everything you just told me. I know you've had a lot of tragedy, and I understand that. But I also can't sort of ignore some of the other allegations. And I, you're not guilty of them yet. You're not right. proven. I'm not sentencing you for those, but I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you locked up until we until we figure out what's next. Okay. And I will have a I will have a GPS tether on though, so it's not like I wouldn't be. I mean, because I got a five thousand dollar. I mean, a fifty thousand dollar bond that I still will have to come up with the money to even post bail on that. But I will have a GPS tether, so they would know exactly where you know I would be at. I mean. Like I just like I said, I understand I understand the concept of that, sir. But again, I have to. I can't just sort of say, "Oh, that's okay." I mean, again, if it, if it on the sixteenth, if we don't reach a resolution, or if we do, and Ms. White wants to make a particular argument about how you're, I mean, if everything else is cleared up and that this is the only thing keeping you in, and that's the only thing, then I'll consider it. But I'm just not going to do it today. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Court does call the case of the people. State of Michigan versus James Johnson. And the court have, has reviewed both the people's, um, the phone calls for the people as well as defense. Is there any additional argument from my side? Your Honor, um, just briefly, um, I just, um, because some things have happened since the motion was filed, I just, I know that there's been a lot of focus on what the alleged victim has said in another hearing. I'd like to focus on what Mr. Johnson has done um, because I believe that's what this hearing is really about is his wrongdoing. And there was voluminous wrongdoing. This court ordered no contact, I believe on March 9th of this year. And at the time of the filing of this motion, there had been 69 attempted or successful um, completed contacts. Some would call that harassment. Um, in the context of a domestic violence, the whole reason for no contact orders is to prevent this kind of thing, because it does cause victims to change their mind about what they want to do. It influences them. Um, it manipulates them. Um, even statements such as, uh, you know, how are the kids doing? Or I'd like us to get married when I get out or things like that, seemingly maybe yes. innocuous, are, are manipulative. There has been, as I indicated, the sheer volume of, of the cases here, but also specifically some of the conversations he has with her. He's more explicit in that he tells her during the phone call, I believe on July 21st, to call his attorney, the PD, Kleeman, to tell them that this case, and then he gives her the case number, tell them to say that she never said that. Um, and he also then goes on to say, just so that all of us are listening can understand that he's not trying to intimidate or threaten her, but he needs her to write to the judge. I would argue to your honor that that is very subtle um, and manipulative and it is wrongdoing and it continues in other contacts that he has with her. He, he tells her, he tells Miss on July 25th, I want you to call the prosecutor and tell them you are not pressing forward with these charges. He mentions to her again on July 26th about dropping the case. Um, she, you know, she is having all of these um, contacts with him and we don't know precisely what her thought process is. We, we don't know if right? she's feeling, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, Mr. Johnson can't do okay. it that you right, cannot you're right. do it that way. I know I'm right. right. Can't do it that way. Go ahead, Ms. Rose. Thank you. Um, we don't know if she is saying what she said or not participating because of a safety concern. We don't know if it's because he simply worn her down. We don't know if she has an idea of what he may do when he is out. Um, we just, those are so many questions and they factor so heavily into the 
um, domestic violence dynamic that I would submit to your honor that this is part of the whole rationale for this kind of um, procedure for the forfeiture by wrongdoing. We, if we look at the defendant's intent here, um, and we asked ourselves what the intent was, I think it's pretty clear that his intent is to get out of trouble. Um, he's persuading, he's influencing, he's manipulating not to come to court. It's more subtle, but subtlety is often more effective than a direct, I'm going to kill you or something like that kind of threat. It's especially telling in the recording on August 8th, where the victim reads back an email she's supposed to be sending to the court. And he says, no, you're going to take that part out about James Johnson. This email is coming from you. He's clearly controlling the situation. I would submit to your honor that this is precisely the sort of thing that is meant to be um, addressed by forfeiture by wrongdoing. And I'd ask the court to grant the prosecutor's motion. Thank you. Mr. Bernstein. Your Honor, one of the things that I want to highlight here is that there's already been an evidentiary hearing about whether James Johnson committed what's called witness intimidation. And that's a very, very broad statute that encompasses all the sorts of different behaviors that Ms. Reiser is accusing Mr. Johnson of doing. Uh, looking, at, looking at the jury instructions, the statute, it, it's it's not even just witness intimidation, it's even attempted witness intimidation is considered witness intimidation for the statute. And with all of those things that fall under the umbrella of witness intimidation, it, I mean, that has to be consistent with forfeiture by wrongdoing. If we're talking about wrongdoing, all those behaviors are encompassed under that umbrella, Your Honor. Well, it's court it's, judge. I don't mean to interrupt you, but isn't there a problem with that analysis? Because I'm looking at, really the conclusion of some act when I'm looking at witness intimidation, that this is what's happened. Whereas forfeiture by wrongdoing doesn't necessarily mean that, does it? Well, I, I would say that the forfeiture by wrongdoing has to occur by essentially what would be witness intimidation. And I wanna get back to the point, but I guess I wanna point out that there actually hasn't been any forfeiture. I, I've spoken with Aisha Paula Henderson several times, and I understand she's come to court several times. She has not been forfeit in any sense. I think the prosecution just doesn't like what she's saying when she comes to court and when she talks to them. So that's really not a, a problem. But, you know, a, a district court judge already found that there hasn't been witness intimidation. And I, I think that's telling them whether there could be forfeiture. But I guess I guess perhaps the state has to prove that there has been not, some not bound by that decision. Well, we don't really have the entire transcript because when the prosecutor got it, she only got, well, not Miss Riser, but we only have the um, part where I testifies. But I guess she did testify that she was not forfeited from appearing at court. And she did, in fact, appear in court that day, which was subsequent to this case starting. So I, I guess I would submit that she hasn't not appeared in court, which would be an element for forfeiture by wrongdoing. But other than that, Judge, I'd just leave it to the court's discretion. I think we're almost at 93 days here. Um, but I, I would rest on, on my written motion, which I think brings back a lot of points, mainly about context. Ms. Reiser's, I, I, I think there's a context that is being missed in Ms. Reiser's argument because she's saying that you know, James is telling her to do this, telling her to do that, but he's telling her things that has already said that she was going to do. So it's more like he's parroting back what she's already said and reminding her to do it rather than saying, this is what I want you to do. So there's a context to it, Your Honor, but I'm confident that the court can take into account the written motions, et cetera. Thank you. Anything else from the people? I, I just feel the need to point out that that context was all wrongdoing, because it was all contact in violation of the court's order. Other than that, I'll leave it in your discretion, Your Honor. When I was reviewing both sides, um, the phone calls, when I'm listening to them, and, and I think the people are right in one respect, and that is, is that there can be subtle things that are said um, that cause somebody to do this or do that. And what makes that then difficult 
is, as people also pointed, is, is that as I'm listening to them, I realize that the defendant in even having the conversation, just in even, even making that call is violating the court's order. He's committing that initial wrong. That's why I don't think the analysis that defense gets into regarding the witness intimidation part really is really applicable here. Um, he's, he's engaged in that behavior. And while I get, sometimes you want to talk to folks, the problem is he is repeatedly doing it. And what I wish is I had gotten to through these conversations is I just wish that to the extent I can, I'm permitted to wish that Mr. Johnson, if this weren't his sort of intent to do these things, that he just wouldn't have made the cause, just wouldn't have done it. Because then, not in a circumstance where I'm thinking that even um, what the alleged victim is saying in one case is being said for a particular purpose. Um, the other thing that, that also is interesting is in reviewing the file, because it was a, a mention of communication to the court, um, those phone calls, which usually don't come to the court's attention, that there were, I believe, two separate communications to the court by this individual to let him out. And now that didn't happen on, on I don't think either occasion, I don't think it, it actually occurred, but it certainly colors what's transpiring in the background. And so once again, I think that what the defendant, like I said, I mean, my wish, because this becomes a much easier call, quite frankly, is whether or not the, if the defendant had not made these calls. And, and certainly, certainly not the numbers, just the frequency of the calls is, I don't know. I, I wish that his privileges to do that had been closed off because then Quite frankly, he doesn't find himself in this position. The people aren't in this position. The defense isn't in. Nobody's in this position. It's either going to proceed or it's not going to proceed. There wouldn't have even been the basis for this motion. Um, and whether or not even proceeding with this motion, the, um, you know, it, it doesn't say whether or not the people can even substantiate their case. Um, even if it's proceeded with the motion. But having listened to all of it, having read the, the uh, briefs and documents filed in the case and looking at it and, and really the sheer, not just the sheer volume, but the repeated wrong or violation of the court's order leads this court to the conclusion that I should grant the people's motion in this case allow them to proceed by his wrongdoing um, and proceed forth with the case. I realize, and Mr. Bernstein, I take to heart what you're indicating that in the long run regarding this defendant, certainly his incarceration um, may not mean much because of the, the time that has elapsed. Um, well, I'm not taking that into account in my decision. I am mindful of that also. So the people's motion to proceed by forfeiture by wrongdoing is granted. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this matter. I mean, we'll on the he's got a, hold on. He's got a number of them coming before me. Um, he's got this one coming up. I think we're set on this one for the 19th. Yes. And then the 21st. And yes. then um, he also 
And then he's got another jury selection in November on those cases. So, and Mr. Bernstein, are you rep? Are you representing him on that one, or is? I think has, I think the PD's office has him, Your Honor. He has the November one. Yeah, this is, that, the only is that right, Mr. Johnson? Yes, I only got a uh, Sam on this case. I mean, I think our got next it. court appearance will be jury selection, correct? Well, no, it would be final settlement conference. Oh. And on Wednesday, is it? Yeah, it's on Wednesday. And then jury selection, if necessary, on Friday. Oh, well. All right. And then you got, I was about to say, you got too many things before me, but do you have those? And then he's here tomorrow. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm in front of you tomorrow only on a uh, trespass, and I believe. On the trespass. That's tomorrow. Yes. Right. Okay, so it's a trespass tomorrow. Final settlement conference on this one. And then potential jury selection on this one. And jury selection on Friday. He has a felony. Oh, Hopefully we can book you what? for Thursday as well, Your Honor. Yeah. Do you, you don't have his case on Thursday. No, no Your Honor. That's the joint gang, Scotty. What, yeah, what is that? Uh, that's a case that they dismissed uh, three resisting arrests and they just uh, picked it back up or recharged me. Okay, um, hold, on. hold on a minute. We're looking. That's on this Thursday? Yes. So I believe that's a PCC, Your Honor. Yeah, it's a PCC. Three counts of resisting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she can't tell if it's a reauthorization. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's I, I believe it is, Your Honor. I believe there was um, a witness on availability on the first date, and so okay. they were reauthorized. So that one's reauthorized. All right. Yeah, we'll be saying that. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm just going to suggest to folks, and so you've got Joy Gaines. I believe so, yes. And who do you, you got Gallagher? Oh, uh, uh, yes. The trespass and on the A&E. Yeah, the A and B we're going to trial with. That was the uh, one that we set up. Oh, I remember. Here's what I'm going to suggest to everybody. Um, and as you can tell, I have Mr. Johnson here four days this week. So I'm going to suggest to the parties that everybody get together and look at a whole global resolution to try to get all these matters because he's just sitting. I mean, I can't do anything about the felonies that may be up, already upstairs, but they may be able to deal with it. But in terms of the stuff here, just to get some of this just resolved there. Yeah. And so, Mr. Johnson, yes. I'll, just, I'll just say this to you and you can take the advice or not. What that means, should everybody be open to doing something like that is each side has to swallow that pill that they may not like. Okay. So you've been before me enough that I feel comfortable saying this. You need to stop being so hard-headed. Most definitely. Swallow that. No, no. Listen to me. Don't just give me that most definitely like you're going to do it. Just take. You might have to take something you don't want to take just to get this done. You're sitting, I just had my staff go through, you're sitting in jail on five cases before me. That's just crazy. And I don't know why you want to spin around in that. Now, I'm just saying that to you. I'm just going to lay that out to you. You do with what you want to do with it. But even when you set that A and B, you're just setting that A and B just to set the A and B. Just sometimes you got to do some stuff that you don't want to do just to get yourself out and go and finally get yourself someplace where you just live your life. Yeah, that's what I'm trying that's to do. Just, it. Just, that's just for me. But you got to listen to folks and quit being so hard. Then. I'll just leave it at that. That's how you have to do it. Okay? All right. We'll, we'll see everybody on Wednesday. All right. You have a good day. Thank you, folks. Kirk Hoskins, People versus James Johnson, again.
again. And don't don't wave it. <laughs> hey, Pierre Rich McDuffie, on behalf of the people. James Gallagher, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of James Johnson. Mr. Johnson, good morning. If you could please state your name for the court. Like everyone who doesn't know. All right, go ahead. Your Honor, I met with Mr. Johnson at the jail in regards to this matter. This is a, a newer matter. Um, we're requesting adjournment. Uh, we're going to see, uh, make some attempts to see if global resolution might be able to be reached with uh, Mr. Johnson and some of his matters. And all of his other cases before me? Yes. He is before me four times this week. I only that's, have two. That's what he uh, indicated to me yesterday. Your Honor, I did want to bring up one thing. Uh, Mr. Oh, Johnson... Boy. <laughs> what did he do now? Oh, well, I, I can't even talk about what I don't know what he's done. But um, <laughs> Mr. Johnson has that A and B plus trespass case that he had set for final settlement in November, and so I don't know if that would be a good date for this one. But uh, but um, I don't do my own final settlements. APA Kirby does them, and she could not do that. So I I don't you know special time final settlements probably aren't a thing. But I just wanted to make the court aware of that as well um, for my yeah. cases. That are set on Wednesday. On the, I don't know what you just told me. Yes. Okay. So he has two cases. He has the yeah. A and B plus trespass case that's already set for November final settlement, which is on a Wednesday. Yes. It probably makes sense to put this one together with that one, um, so that we can work towards a resolution. But I was just sending a heads up to the court that the final settlement conferences are handled not by me. So. I didn't know if it was possible to either do these on a different day or, you know. No, that's not going to happen. Okay. So just um, but, <laughs> but, um, I already, he, Johnson doesn't get his own day. That's not going to happen. Uh, All right. So, I thought this was like a holiday. He, he's got every other day. So he's not getting a special day. Okay. My, my special days are when James Johnson doesn't appear before me. So, <laughs> Mr. I thought we was going to work out something for Thursday for this global resolution for the five cases. Oh, are. now you want a global resolution. No, because <laughs> See, I thought that no, were... don't stop talking. <laughs> Just, right. I know. I know. And Mr. Gallagher is working toward that. You got a lot of stuff. Right. 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 I mean, to hold your cases, it takes a whole library here. So, um, <laughs> so I'm just messing with you. Right. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher what would you think about the idea of at least setting this for a final settlement conference on that November day as you try to work through all of Mr. Johnson's cases? That's fine, I mean, Judge. I can adjourn it out to a pretrial day, but... That's fine, Judge, to adjourn it to that final settlement conference date. All right. I'll adjourn this to final settlement conference, but I'll have to set an accompanying jury with it, but I am not trying to trespass case to it. No <laughs> well, I mean, I will if I have to, but that ain't. Yeah. Final yeah. seven coverage, what? November 16th. November 16th. We going to... November 16th. Well, hey, listen, Your Honor. Um, at... Hold on. Will you let me finish? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me hear... interrupt it. <laughs> he, he just does that. At, it will be at 1.30. Company jury selection on that November 18th, 2022 at 8.30. That's what I was going to say. Uh, about the what, were, about what, were you gonna, what were you gonna say? Because we got a uh, on that November 16th date, we already got a uh, you know, the final settlement conference, but I also got a um, I go in front of Judge Collin at that same exact time on the 16th. On the 16th, I go in front it, of Collin at that same time at 1 30. At 1 30, yeah, okay, somehow or another, they'll get you there than here they'll they'll figure it out they'll figure out how to get you from every judge that you're appearing in front of See, if you didn't have so many cases you wouldn't have this problem yeah i'm working it out though man i, I'm, I'm, I don't know about all that been two years, I'll, I'll, I'll wait and see if you actually work it out i'm, I'm trying i'm about to though you know hopefully it'll be over soon man I'm trying to get through this shit. i got some kids you know i gotta get back out there too so yeah, but you look you look good in orange. All right. No, no. <laughs> okay. All right, man. You have a good one. Fine, we'll continue. Take care, Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Court does call the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus James Johnson. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is your on behalf of the people.
Welcome back, Mr. Johnson. It's like an everyday party with you. All right. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Anyway, all right. What are we doing? Okay. Uh, we were hoping that perhaps all of his cases could be called today and we could get that taken care of. Well, you got to let us know before we get here because I can't. What's the global resolution? There are three cases, Your Honor, on the MDOB case, which is my case. There will be a guilty plea on that one. There will be a guilty plea on the case that just has a single count of trespassing that Mr. Gallagher has. And the other case that Mr. Gallagher has, the AAV and the trespassing, those would be dismissed, Your Honor. Gentlemen, go ahead, give the case. I'm just holding our lawyer a little bit off of that. Well, I can't do the guilty plea off of I need the trespass file. When are those up, the trespass and the other? Yeah, we were just in uh, before you were on the trespass uh, just yesterday. That's the one that he's pleading guilty to. Yes. I believe that's a 221-129. That is correct. Yes, Your Honor. And the case that's being dismissed is 221-0705. All right. Pull me the arrows. Does somebody have a copy of the complaint on the trespass? And I can do it that way. You have a copy of the complaint, a physical copy of the complaint that I can look at. Physical copy, I do not. I do personal. All right. Can you pull it up and then send it? If you if you can just pull it up and send it to Miss Weidman, then I can do it off of that. Does that resolve everything he has before me? I'm just trying to find a way to make him go away. I know that. You do? Yes. Well, that one I can dismiss using my ROA. I just need the complaint to take the plea. Okay. Let's have the defendant sworn. All right, Mr. Johnson, it's this court's understanding that you are going to be pleading guilty to two charges. Is that correct? Here today. The first is that in case number 221. One two nine one to the charge of trespassing. Is that, is that correct, sir? That is a misdemeanor punishable by up to thirty days incarceration and or two hundred and fifty dollar fine plus court costs. You understand that? And the other matter, that being case two two one zero three four seven, that you're be pleading guilty to malicious destruction of a building less than two hundred dollars. That is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail, $500 fine plus court cost. The fine could be increased at three times the value of the property that's destroyed. If that's greater than $200 that or greater than $500, that would become the maximum fine. You understand that? All right. Now, understanding all of that, do you still wish to plead guilty to these charges? To the charge of trespass, how do you plead? To the charge of malicious destruction of a building less than $200, how do you plead? Now you understand that by pleading guilty, you'll not have a trial of any kind. Because of that, you're also giving up certain rights. You're giving up your right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial or to have this court compel their attendance. You're giving up your right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial. You're also giving up your right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent, not have that silence used against you. And you're giving up your right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand that? You understand you're giving up your right to appeal of right. Are you on probation? Okay. You're currently on probation because you got so much, right? 
you understand that your pleas in this case could be considered a violation of your probation. All right. And as such, you could be sentenced to the maximum term of those other cases. You understand that? Understanding that, you still wish to plead guilty to these two charges. All right. Has anybody promised you're not on parole? Okay. It, is it, okay, don't, don't say that. Has anybody promised you anything other than what's, as to these cases, has anybody promised you anything other than what's been stated on the record here today? Has anybody threatened your course? You're doing this voluntarily of your own free will. And because you believe that you are indeed guilty, starting on case uh, 1291, the trespass case, on the date of April 5th, 2022, at the location of 8690 MacArthur Boulevard, Superior Township, Washington County, State of Michigan, were you on those, were you on the premises of Sycamore Meadows, Danbury Park? Had you prior to your entry on that date been told, particularly by a Washington County Sheriff's deputy, that you were not to be on the premise, not on those premises, and you still were there on that day. All right. On the other matter, the malicious destruction of property, on or about December 14, 2021, at the location of apartment 35, what did you do to property of? So Aisha, that makes you think that you're guilty of this offense. Say again. Okay, so you did more than just bang on it. What did you do? I damaged the door. Okay, you damaged it how? By with your hands? Okay. Okay, thank you. So you banged on it to, with such force that it damaged the door and its frame. Pardon? Yeah, correct. Okay. And you don't have a property interest in that, meaning you don't own that door or anything. All right. And when you did that, you did that on purpose. Okay. Council, has the court complied with the court rule and would it be proper to accept this defendant's case? Yes, All right. Court will accept the defendant's plea of guilty to the trespassing charge and also to the malicious destruction of property. Um, on the malicious, let's deal with the malicious destruction of property one first because there's uh, property damage involved in that one. I'm going to have to refer the defendant to probation on that case for a determination at minimum if there's restitution involved. So I'll set sentencing on that one. Now you're set to be sentenced before me when? December 14. Is that right? That. What? Remind me what that's on, because I can't keep track of it. the uh, sentencing matter for the attempt on the Okay. So what I'll do is I'll set sentencing for December 14th, 2022 at nine. If we can get the figures that there is any claim for restitution, as well as get the other information on the attempt, I know we'll try to move it up sometime to our November date. I can't promise you that, but I'll, I'll try to do that for you. Okay. For whatever it's worth, he does have a, a bond on my case and on the on the MDOB case, Your Honor, it must be at the ninety-three day mark at this point. Well, if I give him a PR on it, I can give him a PR on it. That's fine. I think it'd be proper if that bond was extinguished at this point for us, for Your Honor. Um, he's, he's maxed out on the case, and something happens in the public. That, that is that is not anybody's fault but his, but. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll lower the bond in that case, but I have to send it for the for the determination of restitution, um, and I'll give him a PR five thousand on that case. All right, don't and 
Don't make me go up and down about that. All right. Um, miss, because you asked me about changing your bond, then you do something. I got to change it back. I'm not doing that with you anymore. They can have that back. <laughs> Trespassing case. Is there anything you want to say before I impose sentence? I don't have a problem immediately sentencing on that case. I only because I have to ask you. Is there anything, Mr. Jackson, you want to say? Really? That's a first. Write that down. <laughs> you did? Okay. Yeah, I know. Stupid <laughs> suck mouse. All right. It's a sentence of the court. What'd you say? Oh, no, I'm not even talking to you, Mel. All right. In that matter, I'll send you to the statutory amount of $125 state fees. And then 30 days, Washington County Jail credit 30 served. And on the other matter, case 2210705, that matter is dismissed as part of this case. All right, we'll Thank see. You. We'll see you tomorrow. So let me pass that matter briefly. And while we wait, we can deal with Mr. Johnson. Because um, it's like Groundhog Day whenever I'm calling his case. Court does call the case of the People versus James Johnson. Jessica Blanche appearing on behalf of people. Sandra White appearing on behalf of James Johnson. Mr. Johnson, can you state your name? Yeah, James Johnson. <laughs> What's going on, Simpson? This is just um, another day. We're just doing each other all the time. Just another day, man. Just Long time day. no see. I, I have, it, it has not even been 24 hours. But anyway, right. go ahead. Um, Your Honor, I was at the jail last night um, doing my jail visits when there was an emergency, so I was unable to see Mr. Johnson. Oh, I saw him. <laughs> <All right. laughs> In person. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Can we adjourn this one week? Um, can I? We don't like yeah. So I got to see him next week? Yeah. I mean, I didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. 27. 27. Without objection, October 27th, 2022, 9 a.m. Bond continued. We'll Thank see you, you next, Mr. Johnson. If not before, <laughs> just don't pick up anything. I thought All I right. see you tomorrow. Uh, oh, no, we, oh, no we, we canceled that. No, one. no. Yeah. Friday, Friday is the only break I get from you. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. good one, man. Hey, Take Ms. Care. White, you going to come see me? Yes. All right, y'all have a good one. Okay. Take care. Court calls the case People versus James Johnson. Really? Nimish Ganatra, first assistant prosecuting attorney on behalf of the people. Sandra White on behalf of James Johnson. Mr. Johnson, can you state your name for the record? <laughs> <laughs> James Johnson. <laughs> I thought I was done with him. Oh, no. He <laughs> said, the oh, no. <laughs> Friends to the end. Man. Okay. What? Oh, that's right. This is okay. <laughs> All right. What are we doing on these? Uh, Your Honor, I have spoken with Mr. Johnson and we would like to set this for an in-person preliminary exam. All right. Let me. Great fear interpretation. Did all of his other stuff get wrapped up? It's I know they did a global up. resolution on most of this stuff, but I don't know if everything got wrapped up. Not yet, Your Honor. We're in the process <laughs> of a global resolution. I believe yeah. we're waiting on this case to see what happens. All right. So you want this set for in person? Yes. Uh, would the people be ready on the 8th? Uh, Your Honor, I am asking for a later date because I've got officers from three different jurisdictions. Gotcha. Okay. Um. I can do the 15th. Well, 
on your other matters, Mr. Johnson. Yes. You're still held on some other stuff. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I'm trying to. Uh... I know. I know what you're trying to do. Are you, when's your next court date on those other things? Do you know? November 16th, Your Honor. I represent him on one of those. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> thank you. I didn't know if you had him or somebody else had him this way. Okay, I got it. November 16th? Yes. All right. Then let me set this in person November 15th, if that gives the people enough time. 2022, 9 a.m. And that will be before Judge Balbo. All right, Ms. White, is it still cool uh, if I call you at five o'clock to see if what we were talking about yesterday? I'll have to. Oh, you're going to have somebody call me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. We'll see you next time, Mr. Johnson. All righty. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one. Take care. People of the state of Michigan versus James Edward Johnson, case number 22FB1384FY. I think that yeah, they called for him. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Can you say your full name for the record, please? Thank you. Uh, this case is proceeding to preliminary exam, I understand. You ready, Ms. Blanche? And um, I see several officers in the courtroom. I'm going to ask those of you who are testifying to step out and just come in one at a time as you provide your. I do find that um, after listening to all the testimony, the witnesses were credible. Uh, I understand there may have been some extenuating circumstances. We did not have testimony about um, when Mr. Johnson became affected by drugs that he claimed to have taken. Uh, so I do find there's probable cause to believe that the offenses with which he's charged were committed and that he is the person who committed them. I am binding over on all three counts. Uh, how would your client like to proceed with the arraignment? How would your client like to proceed with the arraignment? And I'm making a note that Mr. Johnson is standing mute to the charges, which serves as a not guilty plea for purposes of moving to pretrial. This case is with Judge Punky, and that will be just uh, January 4th, 2023. It's at 1.30 in the afternoon, and bond will continue in the meantime. Thank you. Number 17, 18, and 19, People versus James Johnson, 22593 FH, 251 FH, and 2203 FH. Jessica Blanche, appearing on behalf of People. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sam Bernstein with me on behalf of Mr. Johnson for the probation violation matter. Good morning, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. <laughs> Sandra White. On behalf of Mr. I'm trying to find the case number, Mr. James on the 220003 FHM. Right. All right. Good afternoon, Judge Torsho Feaster, Assistant Public Defender here on the remaining file. Okay. The gang is all here. We have Mr. Johnson. <laughs> you got a lot of lawyers here. So, okay. Yeah, I was trying to get it taken care of, man, out the way. Can you hear us, Mr. Johnson? Are you okay there? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? All right. Yep, can. So my understanding, Mr. Feaster, on your file, it looks like the habitual fourth was added. This is a first pretrial on that file. We have Mr. Bernstein's file um, with the violations of probation. It looks like there are six violations and some added count. And then Ms. White's file, um, again, is also in pretrial status. So um, I'm happy to talk with you on the record. I'm happy to have a bench conference. I'm happy to just get an update. You guys tell me what you are doing today. What are we doing? Could we have Maybe a bench easier. conference, please? Your yeah, I was, was going to say the same thing. Sure. Okay. No one wants to talk first. I don't know that we can have everyone. No, I'm kidding. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. We are back on the record in 22593FH, 2051FH, and 22003FH. Um, there is, I know, a new case that hasn't been given a number yet, 
but um, record should reflect a bench conference with all of the defense lawyers, the attorneys, as well as the prosecutor and probation. Um, there was quite a bit of discussion about the possibilities of some global resolutions. Um, there was the request from the defense side to submit a maybe a combined or a global COBS resolution proposal. Um, Ms. Blanche did sort of put on the record or off the record in our bench conference what her concerns were about that. So I've asked some particular specific questions of the defense team to answer when they submit a COBS memorandum. And then Ms. Blanche will have an opportunity to respond to that directly. And then I will you know, either make a decision and, and let you know what the COBS agreement would be, or then you'll know whether there's not going to be one and you can decide what to do with your pre-trial status. My understanding is that the case that was bound over yesterday is scheduled for January 4th. Um, so that's going to be the likely next date that we're going to come back to court um, on all of these matters that would include that case. Um, what I did say at the bench was that in the event that there was a global resolution re reached by the attorneys, then that case could, then all of the cases could be advanced in December. You can let my office know that. But otherwise, I will expect to give you a decision on the COBS proposal at that time. Um, Mr. Johnson, you can rest assured that your team made a very strong argument to modify your bond and allow your release from the Washtenaw County Jail. Um, various proposals there. Um, I said I was not particularly inclined to do so. So Ms. White or Mr. Bernstein or Mr. Feaster, if you wish to put something on the record, you are welcome to do that. Um, and we'll go from there. Ms. White, you're muted. Just noticed that, thank you. I just wanted to remind the court that I know his bond currently was, is no bond. A lot of that was due to an armed robbery charge, that case that has been dismissed. He does have ties to the community and a place to go, and he's willing to wear a tether if that will make the court feel better. And if he could get out, it would help him get back to his children who are now in the hands of different family members. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Bernstein, anything to add to that? Mr. Feaster, anything to add to that? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. And, you know, I, I know your position on this, Ms. Blanche, but is there anything you want to add on the record right now? Judge, I would just note that his prior conviction record of 26 misdemeanors, eight prior felonies, he's, he's violated his probation in front of you. The recommendation is 18 months to 15 years in prison. And then he also has a count of threatening a prosecutor, along with another count of um, delivery manufacturing. And he has three RNOs that were just found over yesterday. I believe based on that, he's a threat to the community. And I'm asking you to keep him in custody. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm Mr. Johnson. I know, you know, we've had a lot of discussion with you and your team. Um, at this time, we're going to set the hearings off for January 4th. I'm not going to release you at this time. I'm not going to modify your bond. I I'm, appreciate that your, your children are with other family members, but this is kind of a symptom of these types of allegations and the concern that they give rise to for the court. Um, if, in fact, your lawyers can work out a deal, whatever that deal is with the prosecutor in probation, I am absolutely fine to advance the hearing and then make some decisions at that point. But at this time, we'll come back on January 4th at 1.30. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, yep. Hey, um, so um can I when can I contact my attorneys, you guys? When it'll be well, they'll have to contact you. The problem with being in custody and during the docket is that you're gonna take up somebody else's slot. So your lawyers will reach out to you to contact you, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And I do believe Mr. Johnson is up in but I have him represented by Sam Bernstein on one of these. Uh, that is correct, Judge. Now, Mr. Bernstein contacted me, Judge, and asked if I could handle that matter. Um, he did send me the PSI in regards to that. I believe Mr. Johnson is uh, aware of this. Oh, okay. All right. Court, then we'll call the cases of the people versus James Edward Johnson. James Gallagher, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of James Johnson. Mr. Johnson, good morning. If you could please state your name for the court. James Johnson. All right. And Mr. Johnson, you don't have any problem with Mr. Gallagher filling in for Sam Bernstein? Uh, no, sir. All right. Very good.
Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes, and Your Honor, uh, Mr. Johnson, he's he's been very good about staying in contact with me. Uh, in our most recent conversation, uh, we've been adjourning uh, the sentencing just because he has some pending matters uh, at the circuit court. Uh, however, Mr. Johnson does wish to uh, proceed here with sentencing today. Is that is that right, Mr. Johnson? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Your Honor, in regards to. Uh, our matter, the 212-1033, uh, the recommendation is for 365 days jail. Uh, I did see there's uh, early release. In regards to the PSI, there is just one correction judge. At the top, it has jail credit listed as 100 days, but at the bottom, it's 162 days. I believe the correct number is 162 days. That is correct. That is an error on my part. And that was with uh, release to the, uh, the MRT program, correct? Correct, yes. I, no, I have oh. I have 162 days served. It that, it is 162. He has a credit okay. of 162, Your Honor. Yeah. All right. My okay. apologies. Okay. Thank you. And Judge, I know the court is very familiar with Mr. Johnson. Uh, he and I have actually we've had a good relationship. He's uh, he's always been very respectful with me. Um, Seriously? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he and I have uh, developed a mutual respect for one another. Uh, we've, we've had good conversations. Um, and like I said, he's been very good about communicating with me. He's uh, asking the court uh, to consider uh, a nine-month sentence as opposed to a 365-day sentence. He does have those pending matters at circuit court. Uh, not right. Not quite sure what's, uh, what's going to happen in those matters. But uh, you know, I certainly do wish Mr. Johnson the best. He and I, and he's talked about this with the court judge that uh, you know, he, he would like to be released here at some point so that he can be a father with his uh, children. And um, I, I believe he's serious about that. Okay. In regards to uh, Mr. Bernstein's matter, we we're asking the court to adopt the recommendation. Okay. All right. I almost hate to do this. Mr. Johnson, anything you want to tell me before I impose sentence? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I just, no, I ain't got nothing to say. I've just been here for a while, so I'm ready to get back out there to my kids, man. So, trying to get anything done. And see you, Mr. Johnson, you got so much stuff going on. Are yeah. you finally just tired? Yeah, that's what I tell them. You know, that's what I be telling myself, and that's all my family. I'm tired of this, so you know, I ain't got no problem with doing the MRT program because I know that that's. I've been talking to some guys in here, so that's something that I probably do need, you know, so. I, really know. I think you do. I think, and I'll just tell you this, Mr. Johnson, you say stuff, you do stuff, and all of that stuff just gets you in more trouble. Yeah. Really and, and it's all because you, you did all these things, you got all those cases going on, you get angry, then you start talking mess, and that gets you in more trouble and everything. And, and I'll just tell you, you know, after you got through having your trying to have an attitude with me and realize that because <laughs> it, it didn't work. Because yeah. but once you got past that, you know, and I always knew that you could be a decent person if you want to be. There, there isn't a doubt in my mind. And that's really when Mr. Gallagher is talking about what he's talking about, he, about how you um, got along and, and with him and that you two could talk to each other. You know, Mr. Johnson, had it been maybe about three, four months ago, I wouldn't have heard that from Mr. Gallagher because you would have been just trying to fight with everybody about everything. Yeah, I'm coming to realize that, you know, I'm I, I got to look into myself and you know, do some deep study into myself to change the outcome of things. So, because you know, when we saw you on camera and see, we were watching you, even though we weren't in the courtroom, I could still see you. Oh. I got, I got, <laughs> I got eyes on. But, but the thing is, you were sitting in the chair. You were sitting in the chair like you were supposed to. Then all of a sudden, you got up and started walking around. And I'm like, Johnson, sit down. Because I, I didn't know what you were going to do. I just, like, just sit down. Just sit down and wait. All right. <clears throat> Look, young man, you, and you're right. You got to get out there and you, you know, you got to figure out through all the mess you've done, you got a much bigger job ahead of you because you got to be a dad. Yes. And you got to teach those kids how to 
operate the world and not operate the way you've been operating. Yes, sir. I didn't think we'd ever be able to get to the point of having this conversation. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I did not. I honestly did not. Because uh, when you want to be a knucklehead, you're a knucklehead. I wasn't going to say something else, but I can't say it. <laughs> I can read your mind. <laughs> yeah, you okay, then good. You know what I was going to say. <laughs> On case 347, it's the sentence of the court, $125 statutory fees. 93 days in jail, credit for 93 served. Um, on the other matter, and I, I understand his desire to have me give him um, the nine month or the six month sentence, but I'm gonna follow the recommendation of probation. $125 fines and court costs, 365 days in jail. I'll give him credit for the 162 that he served and then he's to serve the balance. He is to complete the MRT program. I'll consider early release upon his completion of that program. Okay. All right. And Mr. Johnson knows I'm a man of my word. So if he gets to that program, and I wouldn't do that if I didn't think that it would help you and that you need it. All right. Yes, sir. So get through that program. Man, he's even calling me, sir. <laughs> I, I just, he, 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 he doesn't like that. I don't know what they did to him. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, James, you take care of yourself. All right, you do the same. Thank you, Judge. Yep. We'll see you, Mr. Johnson. Court calls the case. And you know, Mr. Gallagher, um, and I know you're leaving us, and I'm not going to say anything at this point, but um, it's because of what you did on that case with that gentleman that you're going to be sorely missed. Yeah, he. Uh, we were off to a rough start, but... Um, yes. But we, we were able to get through it and talk through it, and um, I, we developed a very, a very good relationship. And that's in part to who you are. Sure. I appreciate that, Judge. Court calls the case of the people versus Robert Stetler.